Hey guys, how's it going? It is Drake. So I've played Call of Duty for a long time. I've got some interesting opinions about Call of Duty and I thought what better way to consolidate that than in a nice tier list for everyone to see if it's beyond the internet forever and people to judge me by. Judgment time. Now, my list might go pretty quickly because a good portion of the games probably exist in the middle. That's why the red and the green have got to be very distinct from each other. At the top, we've got Daddy Tier. This game's near perfection. You're not going to get better than this. This is the creme de la creme of Call of Duty games. The right gameplay, the right maps, the pro scene is decent. It's almost unanimously loved. I am going to have games in this category that you do not agree with. On the flip side of that, Losing IQ, if you like the games in this category, you may not like me and I may not like you. We might have problems. This is a cold game to its core. So with that said, I want to add the first game to Losing IQ. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare nearly destroyed the franchise because of its trash movement that tried to emulate the forward momentum of Titanfall. Titanfall tried to do something different with the founders of Modern Warfare 2. Really good game. Call of Duty thought it was falling behind and it tried to reinvent the wheel. It fell over. It was dog shit. This is not a good game. It was never a good game. If this was one of your first Call of Duties and you've got that nostalgia for it, I respect that. I've got that for other games on this list, but this ain't it. This is a bad game almost across the board. With that said, let's just kind of crack through the list pretty quickly. Call of Duty 1, it was on PC. I played it retroactively on PlayStation 3. It was single player only at the time, I think, but it was moody vibes. It, it just wasn't, it wasn't what we wanted it to be for me retroactively. That said, I'd played a ton of Call of Duty at that point, so this game wasn't going to do it for me. Call of Duty 2, the origins of optic gaming. Um, this felt good at the time. And when I go through this list, by the way, I want you to remember one thing. I'm doing this how I felt at the time and how I feel like looking back. Call of Duty 2, great sniping game. Everything else, meh. Call of Duty 3. This is when I started playing Call of Duty. I've in fact only played the others retroactively. So Call of Duty 3, where does this go? It's meh, it's meh. This was Treyarch's first Call of Duty game. It was my first real online game i want to say i didn't have a pc growing up like not a great one and this was my first probably fps online they tried a lot of stuff in this game they tried weapon loadout similar to battlefield they tried vehicles similar to battlefield they tried big maps similar to battlefield it just didn't work and people weren't enjoying it Fifty thousand people used to live here now it's a ghost town This is the most important game. It was the first time they introduced their prestige-like system, RPG elements, creator class, etc., all that good stuff. This game changed a lot of things. This game is Daddy Tier. Not only because it was great when it came out and everyone loved it, because of what it means to the industry and what it actually does for games just everywhere. Like, I don't care if you dislike Call of Duty and you're watching this video ironically, this game improved your gaming experience overall. World at War. This is the first interesting one, and let me tell you why. I'm old enough to remember when this game came out and everyone flooded back to Call of Duty 4. People called this a skin of Call of Duty 4, and they weren't entirely wrong. I have got a lot of respect for this game. I like World War II elements, which is why I like Vanguard coming up. This go, I think this goes in S tier, right? Because you can't make the argument that this is just a skin of Call of Duty and then place it somewhere below that, right? It's still got the gameplay, it's still got the fundamentals, it still feels good, and the maps were really good in this game. And it introduced zombies, so a ton of respect for that game. Oh god, I have next to no subscribers and I'm about to lose any that I may do have. Uh, Modern Warfare 2. No, it's not in daddy tier. You have a foggy memory when it comes to this game. This game is great for one reason and one reason only. It put gaming on the map. Everyone knew about this game. Everyone bought this game. Everyone experienced this game in some way or another. This is a respectable game because I think it made Avengers level money in 2009. It was one game, it made it in a day. The game though, mixed feelings on. Great map design, reasonably good multiplayer, 
atrocious weapon balancing, right? The UMP-45 just shredded everything at long range of stopping power. The ACR was effectively a laser beam. You think you see accurate guns now in Call of Duty? No, no, you didn't see anything until you seen the ACR in Modern Warfare 2. I'm doing all this off memory, by the way. That's how painful of an experience this game kind of was. I remember when the nuke was first a thing and people loved it. I got hundreds, if not thousands of nukes on that game. You didn't need 25 killers, you needed seven. You got a Harrier jet, a chopper gunner, and you're off to the races. You were usually good to get a nuke. My biggest issue with this game, and this is where most of Call of Duty fans disagree with me, it got rid of Juggernaut, but kept stopping power. Here's the math behind it. Stopping power adds 25% damage. Juggernaut adds 25% health. If we run into each other and we've got opposing perks, it just equals each other out. But people had this idea and people cried about it that Juggernaut was OP and this and that. It wasn't. It was completely equal. It was just the perfect antidote to stopping power and everyone used it. In Modern Warfare 2, they removed Juggernaut and kept stopping power. It was ridiculous. It was stupid and just wasn't for me. Where does it go on the list? For me, with everything said, I owe a ton of respect for the game. It could go in S tier, but for me, it's actually not. It's going to go down as a solid game. Like, the, you, I know you're pausing the video to go to the comments, but that's just where it is. At Black Ops, uh, Daddy tier. We're not going to waste any time with that. It's Daddy tier. Let me tell you why. Single player, the best single player experience to Call of Duty at that point, maybe still is. Multiplayer, the most balanced, well-refined Call of Duty multiplayer experience, probably still to date, Black Ops 2 maybe comes close. Zombies was improved in almost every regard. Everything about this game was just an improvement of not only the Treyarch games, but the Infinity War games that came before it. This was Treyarch's best Call of Duty game. Maybe still is, depending on who you ask but we're asking me, and yeah, this is probably my favorite Call of Duty game of all time. Modern Warfare 3. Um, this was actually when I last properly did YouTube. Um, I got a lot of views because of this game, and I was very proud of it. Was it good? No. This goes in the, like, solid to meh tier. Like, if I could put it right here, I would. I'm not going to do you like that. I'm going to say it belongs maybe this category. Really good maps. Really good maps. Awful pro scene. And the guns felt really good. And the introduction of Specialist, I think, just made the game super enjoyable because whenever I was making gameplays, and this is biased to me, of course, but whenever I was making gameplays, it felt so good to get like a 100 kill game just using Specialist because no one would be in the comments like, oh, you just got that because of the kill streaks. Brilliant. Black Ops 2. Great pro scene, great ranked mode in the game, great multiplayer, a great single player, I think, and Zombies was improved. Uh, across the board, a better game than Black Ops 1. I can't say much about this game because I played it for about a day. And I mean a day in game time, so 24 hours. I didn't have the time at university, and I always regret the fact I didn't carry on my YouTube channel and just make videos about Black Ops 2. I would have loved this game. There is no doubt in my mind that if I would have got the time into this game that I got in Black Ops 1, which was about 40 to 50 days, this game would be like, I'd have to make another tier. In fact, no, there would be like another S plus tier. All those games would go in it and this will go to daddy tier. Like it's just, I really regret missing out on this game. And if you do have fond memories of that game, please tell me in the comments down below. And, and the creator class was, I think people still generally regard this as the best class system to date. Um, I'm going to put it in S tier purely because what I did play of it was exceptional and I'm no stranger to like understanding the game and fully appreciating why it was just absolutely brilliant. Call of Duty Ghosts. The series was in a bit of a weird point here because I think it was catching some heat from Battlefield 4 maybe or some other Battlefield game. People were falling off. It was the change of the console generation. Hmm. I wasn't a big fan of this game. This was definitely moody vibes. Uh, th this wasn't for me. Black Ops 3 uh, is S tier. Uh, I'll have nothing about it. I have a ton of respect for this game because this was where the refinement happened. This was where the, the nonsense from Advanced Warfare was gone and they made huge improvements on this game. Really, really good work. Uh, everything felt good. And this was arguably one of the best competitive seasons as well of Call of Duty. Big fan. Uh, Zombies was improved as well. So I... I 
just great stuff. Infinite Warfare. Um, I played not a lot of this because I left university and I had a ton of depression and I was miserable. But I did play it, I quite enjoyed it. So I'm going to put that in uh, the solid tier. It had a pretty good pro scene as well. And yeah, all around good game. All due to World War II. Now, if you're thinking, Drake, why are you being retroactive with some of these? Here's why. When I think of Call of Duty World War II, when I first played it, I played the shit out of it and loved it. It was really good. And then I just fell off it completely. Didn't like it, didn't care for it, whatever. And then I looked back and I thought, wow, this is impressive. This is good. This was a fine game, but retroactively after playing Modern Warfare, this game was a gold mine. The weapons felt good, the rank system was pretty good, the maps were impeccable. I think this goes in a solid, solid, solid tier. Because there is so much good about it and it just didn't get the right chance. And I think Sledgehammer, arguably Sledgehammer are the most impressive studio of all of the Call of Duty studios. And I'm really, really impressed with what they've managed to do with the, the, the shackles on of Call of Duty in some ways. Black Ops 4, uh, Black Ops 4 is, is ooh, uh, it's, uh, I'm gonna say it's a solid game. I didn't really like the specialist. If the specialists weren't in the game and this was a refinement of the Black Ops 2 formula, daddy tier, but it wasn't. And it had no single player and I don't play single player Call of Duty anymore, but for those that do, this kind of sucks. Like, it's not really fair. Like. Especially when you're charging full price for it. Modern Warfare. Uh, the doors sucked. I don't like the new engine. I don't like the movement. Uh, there was very little about this game I actually like. The multiplayer was atrocious for the longest time. Might still be. And this is... Uh, I've spent 10 years watching esports, if not longer. Maybe 15, I don't know. This has the single worst viewing experience of any esports title I have ever watched. I've watched Rocket League drunk, and it was a more comprehensible like, situation than this. This was atrocious. If you need to know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the first ever event of Modern Warfare when the CDL was introduced. They would just kept like swapping screens. It was 5v5, I think. It was just so bad. It was so, so bad. Call of Duty Cold War. Call of Duty Cold War goes to meh as well. Now, I this game deserves a little bit of credit and I'm gonna tell you why. This game was made effectively during the pandemic, I believe. So the team worked on this when they were working from home. The multiplayer was very strong for this game. I can't say much for the rest of the game because I didn't play it all that much. But what was there in the multiplayer was just really kind of what they could muster together. And I think it was fine. Now, I had to play Champion Hill, the Alpha, with this. As much as I like my PlayStation 5, this is not my preferred control style. Uh, this is, this, this little puppy right here. So when I'm playing the game, and you may have seen the video already, I might put it up first, it makes sense to put it up first. Oh, I couldn't, I, it, it angers me, because I used to be so good at Call of Duty and Controller, right? Like the 3, 7 KD, all that good stuff. I was like GB leaderboard number one, all that. Good stuff with a controller. And I cannot use a controller anymore, so it angers me. And I know that if I was using a mouse and keyboard, I would just not crush, well, I'd probably crush them. I'd do a lot, lot better than I could do on a controller. That said, is the game enjoyable? Yes. Champion Hill is very good. It's a really nice refinement of the gunfight stuff from Modern Warfare. The gunplay feels pretty good, although it could do some tightening up a little bit. First impressions of the game are like just really, really impressive. Like this is really good stuff. This could be the game that, that sits really close to S tier or drops below the solid tier. Depends on what they do with ranked mode with, with certain creator class stuff. Like it really, really depends. I want to be optimistic. And I've said this from the start with this channel. I will always try and be optimistic on things. I'm going to say it's going to be an S tier game. It's so nice to see all of the titles like this as one because 
I've thought of this list for years and never really bothered to do anything with them. So it's nice that they're all here. If you agree or disagree with anything, again, just tell me in the comments down below. I'm very interested to hear about other people's opinions. You may have absolutely loved Black Ops 4. You may have absolutely loved Advanced Warfare, and I can completely understand why it's just not for me. That said, if you've enjoyed the video, if you enjoy the channel, all that good stuff, there's plenty more to watch and do. Subscribe, like, all that goodness. And I will see you in probably the Vanguard video. Peace.